Okay, so picking up where I left off last time, so we, we ended up with this minimum mean squared error estimator that was the expected value of x given y. And the problem is that this is like some messy function, right? Kind of what I was doing was I was allowing myself to maximize over all the possible functions of y, and this is the one that gives me the best answer, right? Problem is that this is kind of a nasty thing to perhaps compute in practice. So uh, compromise to things that are easy to compute is I, I'm going to restrict myself to the class of linear functions, right? I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to just let you use any function, a, y plus b, that's it. So now it's kind of more like I have a minimization problem over um, minimizing the two values of a and b, the expected value of this function of y minus x squared, okay? Or slightly different way of saying this is the expected value of um, b minus x minus a y, all squared. The reason I wrote it like this is that this here is like a random variable, and this here is just a constant, right? So um, we already know from uh, what I talked about in the last lesson that when I want to find the constant that does the best job of getting close to this thing, what I should choose would be um, b being the expected value of whatever this thing is which is going to be expected value of x minus a times the expected value of y. But, you know, I don't know yet what a is. But now I know what b is, so I can actually plug this in and substitute saying, hey, I'm going to put this in for b. So my a that I'm going to get is saying, find me the best a that minimizes plugging in this b for here, and then I'm going to write it all out. So I have the expected value of um, e of x minus a e of y. That's my y. Then I have minus, uh, I have plus a y minus x, all squared, right? A little bit confusing, right? This is the b. So this is like b plus a y, and then I'm minus xing, and I'm squaring that. Right? So let me rearrange this so it's a little bit easier to read, right? So this is like saying I have argmin of the expected value of, I'm going to take the a parts out, I have y minus e of y, and then I have x minus e of x, and I'm squaring that. Okay? So now I'm going to kind of take some of this out. You can see that when I do some squaring, when I take the expected value of y minus expected value of y squared, that's just like the uh, variance of y, right? So kind of what I have is a squared times the variance of y minus 2a times the expected value of what's in these parentheses, which is the covariance uh, of xy plus the variance of xy. Okay, and now I'm going to minimize this with respect to a, right? So I take the derivative with respect to a and set it equal to zero. I have 2a times the variance of y minus 2 times the covariance of xy equals zero. So that tells me that my a star is going to be uh, the covariance of xy over the variance of y. Or if I write this in terms of like correlation coefficient, I can rearrange things to say that the covariance of xy is really rho the correlation coefficient xy times sigma oh, divided by or times sigma x squared sigma y squared. So basically, I have a relationship like this. You can convince yourself that this is the case. Okay. So what does this tell me? This tells me that now I have an approximation to the MMSE, which is linear, right? So I would guess I, I guess I would call this the um, linear MMSC estimate, which I could call like linear MSC of y. Is this is the a part?
and then I would have the B part. And actually, I'm going to put this all together into a slightly nicer looking form. You can convince yourself that this is the same as what I wrote before, right? I just kind of put the uh, this part inside the parentheses, right? And this is just a slightly different way of saying it, which I guess is actually the way that I should have written it down in the first place, but sorry about that. Okay, right, this is the A and this is the B. I guess I should have done this first and then collected into that, right? So kind of what you see in practice is that, you know, in the best case, what I want to do is I want to take Y and my, um, you know, my MMSE may be some nonlinear function, right? This is the expected value of x given y. My LMSE is some kind of best line that is kind of like the best approximation to this nonlinear function, which is in practice easier to compute, but will give me a higher error if I were to actually do the integration to figure out how, how much I made a mistake, right? So that's one way to think about this is the linear set of the set of linear functions is just a subset of all the possible functions that I could have chosen. And so let me just kind of go back to, to this for one second and say, okay, well, here, um, what if x and y were um, uncorrelated, right? So let's suppose that if rho x, y equals 0, then what would I have? Then my this would be 0, this would be 0, and my uh, x hat would just be um, expected value of x, right? That's like saying, hey, you know, if, if y, x and y are uncorrelated, then letting you know about y doesn't tell me anything about x. That means the best guess that I can make about x is just its mean, right? That's, that's the best I can do. Or kind of going the other way, it's like saying that if x and y are totally correlated, right? If they have correlation coefficient equal to one, then what happens? Well, then I can say that my x hat is gonna be, I'm just gonna collect some terms here. It's like saying I have y minus e of y plus e of x. This is basically like saying all I'm doing is I'm taking the value of y that I saw and I'm rescaling it by the appropriate mean and variance of x and I know that then I should get the exact right answer because basically um, x is entirely predictable from y and vice versa, right? So, you know, this is getting a little bit, you know, rocky, and now we're starting to get into material that would really be more like getting into a follow-on class in probability. But it's a good introduction. We're actually just using the same tools that we had originally, but you can see how much more complicated things can get.